Welcome to another virtual art lesson from the Round Hill Art Center. I'm Eric Scott, and today we're going to be working with one of my favorite materials to, to work with and to teach, and that material is model magic. Now, if you're not familiar with model magic, model magic is a light, almost foamy kind of air dry clay made by Crayola. It comes in lots of very bright colors. And what's great is that it's not a super messy clay. You stick it together and then you let it air dry for at least a day. I prefer two days. And then you're, you have this awesome little sculpture. Um, so today we're going to focus on doing some kind of clay creature or critter or character. Um, and I just find that making those types of things out of this clay uh, I wouldn't say it's the best, but maybe it's a little bit easier because, you know, if you're trying to make a car or a rocket ship, you're, you can't get real precise with it. With this kind of clay, though, it's great for making little little creatures or characters. I love making monsters, and that's what I'll be making. So let's go ahead and get started with our model magic critters, creatures, and characters. I want to go ahead and get started with my model magic character or creature or critter. And what I'm, what I do is I buy, buy it in these big bags. Um, you can find those at arts and crafts stores, and you can also find them online. Uh, but that's a lot of model magic, and so you can buy sets of smaller ones where it's lots of different colors, but it's just a smaller amount. But I take these, and um, I, when I open them up, I don't want them to dry out, so I put them in these resealable uh, freezer bags. They're nice and heavy duty and they're going to keep things nice and moist. The clay's not going to dry out. So I've got green here and I've got a little bit of a light blue. I've got black. I've got lots of other colors over here that I'm going to use and I think I'm going to make a monster. Let me get rid of that one. And so I've got my green. I've already kind of torn it up into a couple big pieces. I don't want the whole thing because that's just a lot of clay. And if you make it too big, um, it can crack pretty easily as it dries. It's just too much. Uh, and then also, if if you make one big thing, then you know that's all you can do. Um, so if I, I break it up, I can make lots of smaller things. So this is a little bit smaller than a baseball. And this is going to be perfect for creating my creature. And so I think, I think I am going to do a green monster. I love to do monsters. And so I have to kind of think about what are the pieces. So this is going to be like for his body, his arms, his legs, his tail. So I'm going to get all that out of this big chunk of clay. However, if you don't use the clay in a while, sometimes it's kind of hard. So what I want to do is I want to start to squish it and I want to start to squeeze it. I want to start to twist it. I can even pull it apart and stick it back together. I can stretch it and fold it. And what this does, it starts to soften the clay and it starts to make it a little stickier. So we call this working the clay. And this is just going to get that clay stickier and softer and stretchier. So it's going to start to stretch more. It doesn't just tear and, and rip into pieces as much. <clears throat> So I just squish it and squeeze it and twist it and fold it. And that's just kind of making it softer and stickier. Okay. And then when I feel like it's pretty soft, it's softer than it was, and it's a little bit stickier, then I know it's ready. So it's stretching a lot more. It feels a lot, uh, a lot softer. So I think this is, this is ready. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take this big chunk of clay and I want to break it into smaller parts because I want to make each part and then stick it back together. So when I do my monsters, I like to do like the head and the body all together as one big shape. So I'm going to break off probably more than half of this or maybe about half of it. And that's going to be the body of my monster. If I was making an animal that had a separate head, I would break off a piece, a smaller piece for the head. Okay, um, so I'm gonna make a monster kind of like, if you're familiar with the minions from Despicable Me, how they're like head and body is all together. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna need two legs for my monster. He's gonna be standing up on two legs. So there's a piece for the leg, a piece for the other leg. 
and then he's gonna have two arms and I try to break them off so that they're about the same size and then I have a, a piece for the tail because he's gonna have a tail so I've got body head two legs two arms and a tail so you have to figure out like well what, what's the creature you're making so if you're doing a dinosaur that has a body a head so body head a neck four legs one two three four and a tail you might need eight pieces so I have one two three four five six I have six pieces and that's that's gonna be good for me okay so <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to squeeze this make it into a rough ball but it's real wrinkly it's real bumpy so what I want to do is I want to get this smoother and the, the way I smooth out model magic is I have to roll it you can't really take your finger and rub it so if you're familiar with like ceramic clay or um, you know some other air dry clays you smooth it by rubbing it that doesn't really work so I want to take this squeeze it and roll it and so I still have wrinkles so roll 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 if you have a nice smooth surface you can roll it on the surface but you got to be careful because if you have lots of dirt or eraser dust or some other stuff on there it can get into your clay okay so I still have I don't know if you can see I still have a little bit of a wrinkle so I do want to roll it <clears throat> and it doesn't have to stay a perfect ball the rolling it just kind of help smooth it out so roll 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 that's looking a lot smoother now and then I do that with each part so these two are for the legs and so I want to roll them All right. so you can see it's still a little rough roll it a little bit more then I do the same thing with this one Okay, now if I look at those two, they look they look pretty even, but I think this one is a little smaller than that one. So I'm just gonna take a pinch. And then that's another reason why I want to roll it into a ball, is that it lets me compare to make sure I have the the right amount. So if if you're doing a creature that has four legs, you can make all four legs the same size. <clears throat> And again, I just want to roll it. So no matter what, I roll it into a ball first, and that's going to smooth it out. So do the same thing here. So that's one arm. And then if I look at those, those, those look pretty good. They look like they're about the same size and then do the same thing with the tail. <clears throat> so before I start making anything, I want to roll it into a ball because that starts to, that makes it really smooth. So you can see now I have these very smooth looking balls of clay. So now I can start to form it. So what kind of shape am I going to do for the body? So maybe I want it to be a little bit longer so I can take it and roll it between my hands or roll it on the table a little bit and it makes it more like an egg. Maybe I want to give my my monster a pointy head and so I kinda of hold my fingers together and just sort of squeeze it. And You can see how now it's pointier. Okay. <clears throat> now so I've got the body these are gonna be the legs are kinda of big so let me get these out of the way so I want to shape the legs, but I don't want real long skinny legs because this clay is real soft and squishy. And so if I have real long legs, they're just going to get real floppy. So I, I really want to have short chubby legs. So one of the things I can do to shape it, I can kind of pinch it. So I want the leg to be a little bit skinnier at the top where it attaches to the to the body. But then I want the bottom of the, f the, the foot, the leg to be flat. So what I'm doing is I'm taking it and pressing it down onto the table and I turn it a little bit and I get this sort of almost like a triangular like a gumdrop shape but it's flat on the bottom so I do that to both 
legs. <clears throat> so this is where if you wanted to do different colors, um, you could you don't have to do it all one color. So I could have different colors for the arms and legs, but he's he's a monster, so he's going to be kind of all the same color. All right, so I've got my got my uh, legs created. So now what I want to do is attach it to the body. So you can see that they're really short and chubby. And that's because if they're real long and skinny, he's just going to fall over. So if I take this now and stick it on, this clay sticks to itself. So once I, I press it on, so I press it on pretty hard, it's stuck. If I try to pull that off, it's going to stretch out and it's going to get all kind of um, stretched out of shape. So that's why if you're using a different color now, once you stick it together, it's stuck together. So he's got these sh two short little legs. This is his body. And so he'll stand up like that. But if I lay them lay him down, you can see his two legs. Now I need his two arms. So I do the same thing. I want to shape it. So I want his arm to be kind of long. So notice how I'm kind of, I always call that like a duck bill. And I'm pinching, just pinching easy. And that allows me to create this longer shape or I could roll it between my hands or I could roll it on the table but it almost starts to look like a little club and maybe I want to flatten one side so that's going to be one arm make his other arm so you can make the arms any way that you want but I always I try to make them both before I stick them together just so that I can look at it and just so that I can see if it's if it if they're about the same size okay I'm not gonna worry about fingers right now maybe later I'll give him little fingers um, and then it's gonna attach to the side of his body so I just stick it on okay if I if I have his arm come in and touch his body it's gonna stay better and then I could do the same thing with this arm Try to get it in about the same place. Okay, so two legs, two arms, and his body. If this was a four-legged creature, of course the legs all would be kind of on the bottom of the animal. And then, you know, he stands up pretty well. But having a tail coming out from behind him is going to help him stand up. So um, this is going to be his tail, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. It's going to kind of like I did with the arms. So I do this a lot. I kind of use my fingers to pinch and squeeze the clay and to shape it. Flatten that part where it's going to stick to the body. And what I wanted to do is I wanted his tail to come down. I don't want it sticking straight out. Okay, so I don't want it sticking straight out. I want it to come down so it will actually touch the, the table. Okay, so I press it on. Now the one thing is with this kind of clay, like I said, you can't smooth it. So sometimes people try to take their finger and smooth the clay. This clay is kind of foamy. It's not real slick and it doesn't really spread. So you just push it together. But you can see how the tail comes out and it's gonna help him stand up. So his tail touches the table, okay? So anyway, so I've got my little guy going. I'm gonna lay him down so that you can see all right, so now I need to do some other things. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do eyes. So I'm gonna pull out some of my white. And I don't need as much this time, so I'm just gonna pull off kind of what I think I need and the rest can stay in the bag. I'll close the bags up later. So I wanna do the same thing that I, that I did with this clay. I wanna stretch it and squeeze it and twist it. But this time it's I can just kind of use my fingers to stretch it and squeeze it and stretch and squeeze and twist. Okay, so I'm gonna pull off a little bit and then just like before I wanna roll it into a ball. And this helps make it smoother. Okay, so there's one. I think the other eye I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to pull off a bigger part. So I do like one eye kind of being bigger than the other. And then I'm going to pick up my little guy and just press his eye on. 
So I just stuck it on now. I want to press it down a little bit more. Do the same thing with that eye. Okay, so there's his eyes. Now I have a little bit of extra clay. I might decide later I want to give him horns or teeth, but I want to go ahead and put this back in the bag for right now because I don't want to have a whole bunch of clay out because if I'm using different clay, it could get stuck to my sculpture, <clears throat> but it can get stuck to the other uh, clay as well. So I want to do his the rest of his eyes. Sometimes people just put a black dot. I want to do some color, and that's why I have this little bit of light blue. So the nice thing about this model magic is that it comes in such different colors um, and then you can also mix colors maybe I'll show you how to do that um, in a little bit but I just want to have a little bit of this and again I kind of squish it and stretch it and twist it but it's such a little piece now okay, and then when it feels soft and sticky I'm gonna break off a little piece and now look at this it's such a small small bit and so I can roll it in my hand. I'm just using my finger. Or sometimes I just roll it between two fingers. And then let's see if this is big enough. So I stick it right in the center and then just press it flat. And that gives me a circle. So maybe I want a slightly smaller piece. Again, I can roll it in my hand. I can roll it between two fingers. And then press it. So some people just stop there, but I want to go one step further. I'm going to give him some pupils. So the color part of your eyes is called the iris. Now I want to do the pupil, which is going to be some black. So this time I just need a little tiny bit. Just a little tiny bit. Okay. And again, I kind of stretch it and squeeze it. And then this time I want it to be even smaller. I mean, watch this. Look how small that is. Because this is going to be a small circle inside of the uh, blue circle. And then push it down. And so there's his, his pupil. This one's going to be just a little bit bigger. But again, look how small that is. So I can roll it with my finger. I can roll it between my fingers and then put it in push it down okay so two irises and then i'm going to take it a step further so i'm going to go back to that white so you know your eyes tend to be wet so a lot of times it will reflect light and so i'm going to put a tiny tiny bit of reflected light and look at that i barely pulled off a little tiny piece and i'm going to roll it between my fingers and oh there it is it's on my thumb that's a teeny teeny tiny piece and oops I just dropped it so I'll pick it up and then I'm gonna put it into the like onto the black and just press it down and there it look it looks like a little bit of reflected light and I kinda like that so that's really hard because you have to pull off just a teeny I mean look how small that is and then I'm gonna roll it between my two fingers and I get this teeny, 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 teeny piece of white, and I gotta put it right on, and then press it down. So there, now he's got eyes. Okay, now I wanna give him a mouth. I could make it out of clay. Let me put this white back. But I wanna use a tool. So you could make an entire thing without any kind of tools, but I have a couple of different tools here, and um, this is a clay tool. But if you don't have a tool, like even, just a, a butter knife from the drawer. This clay is non-toxic, so you could use a, a knife from your from your kitchen. Not a sharp knife, but I would use like a butter knife, and you can stick in. Um, this is a little plastic scraper spatula thing, and both of these are great because I can just take it. So if you have a knife, you use the tip of the knife. Again, just a, not a sharp knife. Just kind of stick it in, and then I stick it, just stab them in, and then I wiggle it back and forth and wiggle it around. And there's a mouth. Okay. So now I want to think about all the other details that I can put on my little monster. Okay. And uh, so he can stand up like that. But I'm going to keep him laying down just so that you can see him. And <clears throat> so maybe I want to give him a tongue. So I like this pink. So I'm just going to pull off just an itty bitty piece. 
I always think it's funny that uh, my monsters um, have their tongue sticking out. So I, I kind of like that. I don't like my monsters to be scary. I like them to be kind of funny or maybe grumpy or maybe a little confused. Um, but, you know, a little tongue, flatten it out. And then what's nice about this tool is it's got kind of an edge on it. So I can <clears throat> I can press it in, make a little indentation like that, that mark that's on your tongue. And he's going to have his tongue sticking out. So I can just stick it right in. And he's like, Bleh, you know, just sticking his tongue out at, at you. Okay. So I've got a tongue. Maybe I want to give him some horns sticking up. So this is where I'll show you how you can mix some clay. So I've got some yellow over here. And I'm going to just take a little bit of yellow. And I think I'm going to take a little bit of this white. And what I'm going to do, white and yellow are going to make a light yellow. Actually, I don't even need that much yellow. Let's go ahead and just break off. I might want to add some more, but so this is a lot of white and just a little bit of yellow. And then I just smush it together. And then to mix it, I just start to squish it and fold it just like I was doing at first. So at first I was doing this to make the clay soft. But now, can, I don't know if you can see on the video, but the clay is starting to turn light yellow. Look at that. Again, I don't know how well it shows up on the video. Oh, there, I think you can really start to see it now. And so I'm just kind of smushing it and squeezing it, getting those colors to mix together. And you can see how it's, it's just a much lighter yellow now. And if I compare it to my white, you can see that it's a little bit yellow, okay? So then I'm gonna break off a piece of this, and I always roll it into a ball first, no matter what, what you know, when I did the tongue, when I did the eyes, I rolled it into a ball first, and now I'm gonna just pinch it at one end, just like I was doing for the arms and the legs. And there I have a horn, I can take it, stick it right on his head, shape it up, do the same thing. Okay, so the nice what I like is the you know it does the horns don't have to be exactly the same size. Okay, so now he's got two little horns. Now I'm thinking I, I still have some of this light yellow left, so I think maybe I'm going to give him some toenails. So if I just break off little bits. And I'm just going to roll them into little tiny balls of clay. So I think I'm going to give him like three toes on each foot. Okay. Oops. Okay. So I have a couple that are a little bit bigger, so maybe those are his big toes. And just stick it right there where his toe would be and squish it on. And then do the next one. And then I have a smaller one for a little toe. So three little toes. Alright, one toe there. Two and three. Okay. So now he's got some toes. Uh, if I want to give him some fingers, so maybe I'll take this clay and put it away. I think I'm going to go back to some of this green that I was using earlier. Okay, now I haven't, well, I wasn't actually using that, but I just pulled off a little bit. And even the little bits, I'm squishing it and squeezing it and working it to make it a little bit more flexible. And just like I made his toes, I'm going to make little balls of clay for fingers. So maybe a thumb and three fingers on each hand. So I do it this way and then I can kind of compare how big they are. Okay. So thumb Stick that right there. 
and then he's got three little fingers. One. Oops. Sometimes I forget that I'm trying to show the camera. Okay, so he's got three little fingers on that hand. Turn him this way. And, don't, and I forgot about his thumb, so he's got three fingers and a thumb. Two fingers. Three fingers. Uh oh, it ran away. It fell on the floor, so I'll look for it later. I'll do one more. That's the problem sometimes is clay will bounce when you drop it and it likes to roll away. Okay. And a third little finger. Okay, so he's got got fingers now. Alright. And then I, I want some other details on him. Let's put that green back. Um so I want him to to have some other details. So I've got horns, and he's got a tongue, he's got fingers and toes. Maybe I want to give him some spots or stripes. And I've got a real bright, uh, it's called neon green. It's kind of like a yellow green. So I'll break off a little bit of that. And that'll be really good to go with his green. And so I'll do the same thing. I want to stretch it and squish it and make it soft. And then I'll just break off, pinch off a little bit. And then I'll say, oh, okay, how big is that? Oh, that's pretty big, so that's gonna be a spot on the back. So if I'm making spots, if I make a little ball of clay and stick it on and then push it flat, it's a great way to make spots. And then there's a smaller one Okay, so he's got three spots on his back. Maybe what I want to do is to take some of this clay and maybe he's got um, a, a tip on his tail. So let me shape like a little triangular shape and push it on. And so now he's got a little uh, green tip on his tail. Maybe he's got some spots on his tail so you can put as many spots or stripes on them as you want. Maybe do one on his arm. Maybe kind of like right where his elbow would be. Now the only problem is that sometimes as I'm holding him, I can squish him. I actually kind of squished his tongue doesn't look too bad, but you do want to be careful if you're holding him a lot. Um, you can really squish parts of him because this clay is really, really soft. Okay, and then maybe I want to have a couple little spots on his front. There's one. Now I want to have a tiny, tiny one. Maybe another tiny one. So again, with the tiny ones, I can just roll them between my two fingers. Okay. So got some spots on them. Now maybe I want to do something a little different with his spots. Let's take some of this yellow. This is just the regular yellow. It's not the uh, light yellow I made. But if I make tiny spots, now maybe I can do a spot inside of a spot just to do something a little different. I don't have to do this with every one, but maybe just a couple just to add something different. Oops, that's kind of big. Oop, it's running away. So I gotta be careful, I'm squishing his fingers. And maybe do one more. Let's 
Okay, so it's all those little details that really make your monsters, your creatures, your critters. So whether you're making a monster, you're making a bear, you're making a tiger, you're making some kind of character, it's still the, kind of the same thing. You wanna, you wanna work your clay to make it soft, you wanna break it into the, the pieces that you're gonna need, and then you wanna roll every piece into a ball before you uh, shape it and apply it. And then once you stick it on, it's stuck on. So if I was like, oh, I don't like this ho this horn, if I try to pull it off, it's going to stretch out. It's 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 stuck. Same thing with the tongue. So I've kind of squished his tongue. I can't really see that line. So I'm going to take my tool again. If I wanted to make a look, make him look furry, I could take my tool. Maybe I poke him and give him little dots or little slashes to make him look more furry. But uh, that, yeah, that's my little. That gets at my little monster. So, um, yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of fun making my little clay monster. Now, you know, here he is, all ready to go, and he needs to dry. So what what I need to do is just set him up somewhere for the next day or two days. That's better, um, and let him dry completely. So he's going to get harder, but he's not going to get rock hard. And I know, I know he's kind of tiny and he looks like he could be like a little toy or a little action figure, but the problem is that even once he's dry, he's going to be kind of fragile and he's going to break easily. So it's really a sculpture meant to be looked at. So uh, even after it's dry, it's not going to be rock hard and it's not going to be like a toy that you can play with. So just kind of keep that in mind, but let it dry out for two full days and then it'll be good to go. So um, thanks again for tuning in and making a, a model magic creature character or critter with me and uh, hope you had some fun and happy creating